Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I want to talk about uh, LiDAR gun receive windows, which are basically the short periods of time in between pulses uh, where it's actually looking for a legitimate reflection and a return signal back from its transmitted pulses. Uh, LiDAR guns are not actually looking for uh, reflections the entire time. Um, and I kind of want to go over that a little bit because it'll help uh, explain a little bit more about uh, jammers and kind of how they operate if we take a look at this. So uh, if you haven't watched my videos yet on how laser jammers work, uh, kind of the smart laser jammers plus the brute force laser jammers. Uh, click on the videos here or just take a look down in the video description and watch those first. Um, this is just going to add some additional information. So the idea is, uh, again, you know, the way a LiDAR gun works is it transmits a pulse and then looks for the reflection, right? So let's say um, this green pulse here is going to be the transmitted pulse. We have one here and then we have another one. Uh, in between, this is the gap between pulses, right? So we have this period of time between pulses. Uh, however, like I mentioned, there's only a short window of opportunity uh, for a legitimate pulse to come back. We're not talking about jammers, but the legitimate pulse. And that's going to be this short orange window here, uh, this receive window, uh, is the time when it's looking for uh, a return pulse. Uh, why doesn't the LiDAR gun look for a pulse the entire time? Uh, if we take a look at the speed of light and just do some quick math, it's actually really simple to understand. Um, let's say with an example LiDAR gun, our example gun that we'll use for now uh, transmits at 100 pulses per second. Uh, many of them do. It's a little bit slow, but some do. Uh, it'll make the math a little bit easy. Um, so let's say our gun transmits at 100 pulses per second. Uh, and that would mean that you know the gap between pulses here uh, is going to be 1 100th of a second, right? So uh, that would be 10 milliseconds. Uh, how far does light travel in 10 milliseconds? Let's find out. Well, we know the speed of light is 3 E8 meters per second. That's kind of how I remember it. Um, but translating that into maybe something that would make a little bit more sense, uh, that's the same thing as 671 million miles per hour or uh, 186,000 miles per second. Every second, light is traveling 186,000 thousand miles. That's a huge distance. Like between here and the moon, it takes a second and a half for light to travel. It's crazy. It's super fast. So in this time of one one hundredth of a second, uh, light travels about um, 1,860 miles. It's one one hundredth uh, of this number. If it, again, if it travels 186,000 miles in a second, in one one hundredth of a second, it's what? 1,862 miles. So uh, 1,860 will round for now is how far light travels between pulses. Now, we know that a LiDAR gun is actually looking for a reflection off of a target, so the light has to travel that far, which means that uh, the farthest distance that we could clock is only half that, because the light has to travel from here to the target vehicle and back. So the entire distance it covers is this 1,800 miles, uh, but because that's twice as far away, uh, that would give our maximum theoretical range in an ideal world of 930 miles is how far this uh, 100 pulse per second gun could clock. Now, we know that a 930 miles is a ridiculously impractical range. You're never going to be giving a speeding ticket to somebody who's 930 miles away, right? Obviously, that's not going to work. So, a practical distance, what would be a practical distance? Um, well, the longest shot I've ever seen, I think I saw a couple years ago, Somebody had posted a screenshot from a laser Atlanta. It was like 11,000 something feet, which is over two miles away. Uh, even that is not going to be a realistic, you know, uh, distance to get a speeding ticket. But just for the sake of, again, to get a number to work with, like what would be the size of this window? Uh, let's say it's three miles. Uh, again, that's way farther than you'll ever see a shot in real life. But let's just say because it's larger than you'll ever see a real shot, that's the time when uh, a LiDAR gun is open to receiving a pulse. So we'll just use this number for uh, three miles. Uh, so if we say three miles is going to be the maximum range of a gun, not this 930 miles, uh, we know that in this time, the LiDAR pulse actually has to travel six miles round trip to give us a three mile maximum range. Uh, light traveling six miles takes 0 0.0322 milliseconds. Uh, and if we run the math to see, okay, well we know this, is going to be, uh, what was it, about 930 miles or so, and this is only 6 miles, uh, that would mean our gap is going to be about 310 times larger. So this right here, this entire gap between pulses is 310 times larger than the time when it's uh, actually open to receiving a pulse at any distance closer than 3 miles. And so uh, you can see the vast majority of the time in here, it's going to ignore everything. There's no point of trying to look for 
uh, return pulse was hundreds of miles away, right? So that's why the uh, LiDAR guns actually only have a small window of opportunity uh, when a legitimate pulse can come back, like completely ignoring laser jammers. That's the only time when even a legitimate pulse can come back. Now, again, this is three miles away. Uh, what if we take a look at maybe more realistic numbers? Uh, a LiDAR guns, um, a lot of them, their maximum range may be listed at a mile. Uh, some of them, you know, the True Speed S, for example, um, the maximum range listed in the manual of that gun is only 2,000 feet. Uh, now, when it comes to the laws, some places state that due to the beam spread of the uh, LiDAR beam, the maximum range of the gun may be only 1,000 feet or 1,500 feet. That's the longest that police officers are allowed to issue tickets. So, um, let's say, you know, a more typical number that you may see in practice is going to be a thousand feet away. Well, a thousand feet away, we know that our pulse has to travel two thousand feet round trip. Uh, if that's the case, that two thousand foot round trip uh, time of flight takes 0 0.00203 milliseconds, or about two microseconds. Uh, and that would mean uh, in this window here for a thousand foot pulse. Okay, round two. So, anyways. A thousand foot pulse, so apparently my putty is not the greatest in the world. I've had that happen before. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like some of the corners are dented and stuff. So I think I need stronger putty and more of it. But anyways, coming back to our subject at hand, a uh, subject a thousand feet away. Um, it's going to give us a 2,000 foot range here. We know it's going to travel, uh, what was that, 930 miles or so, which means this gap is uh, almost 5,000 times larger than the window of opportunity of when uh, the actual pulse is going to be coming back. So again, our receive window is going to be much, much tinier um, when we're looking at, you know, more legitimate distances. Uh, it's for that reason that, um, you know, if we're trying to just send a pulse out at random with like a brute force jammer, chances are, unless we're sending out like a ton of pulses, it's going to wind up in here. Um, and what we're going to need to do with the brute force jammer is to wind up not only in the receive window, but again, making it in between our transmitted pulse and the actual reflected received pulse, right? It needs to fit into even that smaller window. And that's why if you look at uh, a jammer like the LE10, it's transmitting a ton of pulses. It's transmitting at two megahertz. That's two million pulses per second. Two million pulses per second. That's a lot. So when they talk about a high power brute force jammer, it's because it's transmitting so many pulses. Uh, if we compare that to a LiDAR gun, Here's a couple common examples. Uh, the PL3, the Custom Pro Laser 3, is the most popular, most widely used gun on the market. It transmits at 200 pulses per second. At 200 pulses per second, that would mean it's uh, twice as many pulses here. So our, uh, our distance here, kind of our theoretical max range, would be half 930, which is what 465 uh, or so would be our theoretical max range with the PL3. Um, if we look at the Dragon Eye Compact, uh, it's a VPR gun. Its average pulse rate is about 186 pulses per second, so similar to the PL3 in that regard. Uh, the True Speed S actually has one of the fastest pulse rates. It shoots groups of pulses, um, and those groups of pulses are transmitting at uh, 4,000 pulses per second. So, uh, you know, it's a lot faster pulse rate, but nonetheless, uh, in order to get our pulse in, you know, at close range here, we're going to need to transmit a lot of pulses. And that's why if you look at uh, a jammer here like the LE10, it's transmitting at 2 megahertz. It needs just a whole bunch of pulses. It's kind of like just spray and pray, right? Like hoping that some of the pulses land uh, within the receive window and ideally even before uh, the actual reflected pulse gets back. That's why it's transmitting at such high pulse rates. Um, I know in my last video I actually mentioned uh, 2 kilohertz. That was a typo on my part or a right. Oh, ha! Got it that time. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to hold it like this, and then I'm going to redo the putty, because uh, this ain't working. So. <laughs> uh, okay, anyways, uh, you get the idea. As you can see, we've got like a small window of opportunity here, and uh, we need to get our pulse in there, and that's how it works. So, awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to fix my boards now. Later. <laughs>